I'm here in Redmond uh, and uh, I have an interview partner, Bradley Bartz. Uh, Bradley, you are in the Windows Azure Pack team and uh, it's so nice of you to doing an interview wi uh, with me. We want to talk about a little bit about Windows Azure Pack. What is it and what can you use it for? What, what is the purpose of Azure Pack? But maybe first you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit what you are doing here in, at Microsoft. You bet. Uh, my name is Bradley Bartz and I'm a group program manager for the Windows Azure Pack. I've been with Microsoft about 16 years oh. and uh, focused primarily on the cloud these last several years. Um, and again, I've been with Windows Azure Pack since the very early days when we started the project. And uh, one of the questions I often get is, what is it? What is Microsoft doing and why are we building this and, and how do I use it? And so the best thing I can say is, uh, one, um, I'd like to make sure everyone's familiar with Azure because really this is about Microsoft's cloud strategy. Yeah. It's about our, our, our cloud strategy of building these new modern cloud applications that can scale and access a variety of resources. So <clears throat> it's always been part of Microsoft's cloud strategy to deliver our Azure innovation to partner data centers so that they can run the technology inside their data centers. So very early on, several years ago, we started looking at different ways we could do this. And we started the, coming up with this idea of delivering the Windows Azure Pack and how to deliver these kind of Azure-centric scenarios into our partner data centers. But our partners already have uh, very powerful technology today. They're using Hyper-V, they're using Windows Server, they're using VMM. So they have this rich ecosystem of technologies for managing the virtualization mm -hmm. of traditional IT. Mm -hmm. So what we started doing is we started Azure started partnering with the Windows Server and System Center teams to help bring that Azure innovation into that virtualized cloud space for traditional IT. So that's what Azure Pack represents. It represents this kind of transition to uh, the cloud consumption model. And part of that cloud consumption model is also the transition of traditional IT to a self-service model. Okay. Now, if you think about how resources are controlled in the cloud, today, when you go out to Azure or you go to other cloud providers, you basically log in and you just start provisioning resources as you need them. Yeah. <coughs> resources on demand. Yeah. And matter of fact, in the enterprise space, one of the problems we heard from a lot of ITs was what they call rogue IT, where their customers inside the organization are going around the IT department and getting access directly to yeah. Azure or other cloud providers. Yeah. And so they're trying to provide a way of, hey, they're competing in many sense with the self-service agile provisioning of external clouds. So they want to provide that ease of access to their yeah. internal customers. Yeah. Why why are they doing that? We we call it sometimes shadow IT. Shadow IT, uh, yes. Rogue IT. Yes. Uh, the reason for that is not uh, that they are not satisfied with the solution they have maybe, but uh, I heard they are too slow. The exactly. The ent enterprise had a, have a lot of uh, uh, things they have to think of who has access to what and uh, when you go to Azure for example, you click on give me a virtual machine and after maybe Five mi minutes, ten minutes, there it you is. have it and can that's work. Right. Is that the reason? It, it really is. And that's what we mean by self-service. It's about the, the ease of access, the ease of provisioning, provisioning on demand yeah. as quickly as you want. Um, so Azure Pack brings that model, the cloud consumption model, the self-service model of getting access to resources on demand to... Windows Server System Center mm -hmm. for enterprise as well as hosters to provide resources on demand. Now, there are some things that might sound a little scary. So for IT developers or IT administrators out there, you might say, wait a minute, I don't want everybody provisioning resources on demand. I'll run out of capacity. Yeah, of course. Right? That's a problem. Now, in Azure, we want you to consume all you can eat. And pay for it. And pay for it. Yeah, that's so, a business model. But it's a different... It's a different scenario yeah. for even hosters or for, for and especially for enterprise. So Azure Pack not only brings Azure functionality and self-service, but it does it in a way to allow the IT administrator to control how much access you get, ac uh, a tenant can provide. Yeah. We do this through quotas and management. We basically still allow the IT operator to define the controls, to provide the, the limits of how much capacity you can get, but Within that limit, the customer can provision and delete on demand. Yeah. And this is useful for many DevOps scenarios. And 
you know, where their developer or a team is developing new technology and they need to provision resources quickly, do some prototyping, do some development, and then when they're done, they want to throw them away and provision some new resources. Mm -hmm. WAP is great for that. I have a question. Uh, yes. I think I get it. Windows Azure Pack is a core component of the Cloud OS strategy. Yes. Run your uh, workloads where you want. In the public cloud in Azure, at a service provider, or in your own, own premises. So Azure, Azure Pack helps here a lot. Right, it does. So look at our, if you think about the, uh, I'm going to draw a big cloud here. So yeah. hopefully you can see this big cloud. Yeah, I don't know if it will show up on the video. But if we take this cloud, we can divide it up. Right now, we'll say that we have the Azure cloud here. Yeah. Is this yeah. a public cloud? Yeah, this is public cloud, Azure public. We actually have customer clouds. And we have the service provider cloud, or hoster. So we recognize that there'll be clouds running in different data centers, but we want to make sure that the application developer, the person who is writing these new cloud applications, if I'm writing a modern cloud application that's using elastic services that need to scale, it's using a, a reliable messaging services and, and databases of service capabilities, that I can write this modern application, I could run it in the public cloud, or I could run it in my own IT department's cloud, or I can run it in a service provider cloud without having to rebuild the application. Yeah. So I can build for the cloud and then deploy to a variety of clouds. We basically call this the one cloud platform. Mm -hmm. We want a single cloud platform that can run in external data centers to allow the, the modern um, uh, web developer application cloud service developer to write once and deploy to any cloud, but also to allow an IT operator to automate and manage resources that are running in any cloud. Okay. So what WAP is, is our first installment, the first release on our march to this vision. First we did Azure. Now we're building Azure Pack to run with Windows Server and System Center to start building this vision. Mm -hmm. We're not all the way there yet. We have a lot of work we still need to do. But you can start to see this coming together. When I often demo Windows Azure Pack, I start with Azure. I actually demonstrate a scenario of provisioning a, a web application in Azure. Uh, it's with, uh, with Git support and, and publishing it. Then I show that exact same scenario working inside a customer data center. And it works the same. The developer didn't have to change how they build that application. Mm -hmm. They're building it the same way, to publishing it and scaling it in the same way as they do in public, but now they're doing it in a mm -hmm. partner data center. So that's what WAP is about. So uh, I, my background is Hyper-V, so I'm a virtualization guy. Uh, we have the same capabilities for virtual machines. You have virtual machines in uh, Azure, in the public yes. cloud, and we can do the same at the hoster and at the customer cloud, right? Yes. And you can even take, this is a big advantage in the Microsoft model, you can even take a virtual machine you have here running on Hyper-V at the customer side and move it to a hoster or move it to Azure. This is also a big advantage and as I recognize the portal is similar to Azure. It's, it's, that's right. It's quite the same, huh? It is. Matter of fact, the portal that's included in Windows Azure Pack is actually the Azure portal. It okay. is the same technology as the Azure technology. Matter of fact, the Windows Azure Pack team is actually part of the Azure team. So okay. we're part of the same team that builds the Azure management experience. Okay. So now we're shipping that experience as Azure Pack into partner data centers. And while virtualization is the same, so you can move the containers without Azure Pack. You know, Azure Site Recovery allows you to do some backup and restore capabilities and, and between data centers and into Azure. So we have the virtual common virtualization stack and Windows Azure Pack gives you a common management stack for those VMs regardless whether they're running. Yeah. As well as the framework for managing other PaaS services like our Azure website runtime yeah. that's running in Azure and in yeah. partner data centers. So you told us it is possible with web services. We talked about IAS or IAAS, uh, the virtual machines. What else is possible uh, with Azure Pack? There's some, some more stuff, right? There is. Uh, one of the biggest ones, well not biggest, uh, we have the IaaS. Infrastructure as a service, and that's really about doing self-service for VMs yeah. and providing that access. We also have this website path that I was just describing that runs in Azure. If you go to Azure websites and look at how that works, that is the same functionality that's part of Azure Pack. There is also a service bus, which is a reliable messaging. If you're building a modern cloud application, one of the first challenges you'll run into is how to deliver messages between different tiers of your application, especially different tiers of your application that might be 
be scaling differently. You might be scaling the front end to have, you know, two nodes, three nodes, ten nodes, and the back end has, you know, a smaller number of nodes. And you need to have a reliable messaging framework to deliver messages from the front end to the back end. Service Bus is included in Azure Pack for mm -hmm. that purpose. We also work with SQL Server for providing databases as a service. Yeah. And this allows you to do on-demand database provisioning in a self-service manner, just like you would in Azure, but against a SQL Server cluster maintained by the IT department or the hoster. Yeah. And this has full support for many of the SQL Server capabilities, such as Always On. So if you're an IT operator or service provider and you want to provide a database that's always available or highly available with SQL Always On, you can do that. And we just added a new feature in Windows Azure Pack um, in this update right now, which is about uh, resource governance. So you can actually do resource throttling and governance for databases that are provisioned in a, in a database as a service okay. environment. This is a noisy neighbor uh, scenario. That's right. Okay. So uh, that one one uh, customer not uh, consumes all the resources and the other suffers in the in a shared exactly. SQL cluster. Exactly. And uh, to that point, one thing to think about with Azure Pack too is we update it every quarter. So every quarter yeah. we ship a, a, an update. And it's not just bug fixes. It certainly does include bug yeah. fixes, but it also has new features. Every quarter we're shipping new features in Windows Azure Pack for our partners. And one of the new features in this upcoming update is a resource governance. Yeah. Very cool. I do Azure Pack a little bit at customer sites and uh, I like it a lot, the possibilities you have and the, the agility for the enterprise is a really great thing and also what you can do for a hoster to, to uh, uh, offer services like, a, like one of the big cloud uh, providers like Azure to, to your customers. Great things. So Bradley, this was very informative. I thank you for that, that you make Glad it to possible here. to do it on such a hurry. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Thank and, you. Uh, Enjoy it. Thank you for the interview.